Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the creative uh, section for me. My name is Alyssa Cates. This is my second year at bar camp and it's just a really great experience. So I hope you all have a fantastic time today. Um, I work at Enterprise Publishing Company in Blair, Nebraska. My primary duties are newspaper and print design. So I use Acrobat a lot to do all kinds of things with print. But I hope if you're kind of outside that box, you might also find some useful tips and tricks to make the most out of your PDFs and um, just kind of use this program to go in between kind of the big three, Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, and InDesign. But you can actually also use some of these features in any image editing software uh, that you want. So how many people have used Acrobat in some capacity before? Pretty much everybody. So some of this might be repetitive for you, hopefully not too bad. Um, so Acrobat is kind of one of those programs that gets a lot of utility in the business world, so people who need to do PDFs for any reason might use Acrobat to view the PDFs or put multiple PDFs into one file or extract pages from a PDF or things like that. So we're kind of taking off our business hat here today and putting on our creative hat for a lot of the types of techniques that I'm going to be showing you. Um, what we have at the newspaper a lot of times are PDFs sent to us from our clients. So someone creates a template in a corporate office and sends to us and we need to resize it for our purposes. And that oftentimes involves uh, needing to take out images, needing to make it black and white, making sure that it's all ready for press and things like that. So um, I'm going to first of all open this ad from Woodhouse. Uh, so this is exactly what they would have sent to us from their corporate office. And so you can see that um, when we first open the document, there's all of these different options on the right-hand side. So this is kind of a new thing in Acrobat DC. You can customize everything that you put over here. So if you actually go to uh, Tools, um, then you can see all of these different options. And then you can add any one that you want, and it'll appear on the sidebar over here. So it gives you more control over what you're doing. Um, so if we go back to this PDF, I've already kind of set up my tools that I use a lot. Uh, print production is really where I live most of the time and what I'm going to be talking about today. So one of the best features isn't even one of the tools here. It's just dragging your cursor over to the bottom left-hand corner. It will actually show you the exact dimensions of the PDF that you're looking at. So I find that helpful to just do a quick assessment of how large the document is so that I know what I'm working with. Um, and then secondly, I like to go into the print production menu. And there are a lot of options here that are really helpful. I find myself using output preview probably the most. So if you open the output preview menu, uh, you see a lot of options pop up here. The simulation profile is what color space that you're using. So for print, I always like to be in CMYK, obviously. Um, but there are quite a few other choices that you can pick from here. These are all profiles that you might have seen in other Adobe programs if you do a lot with photography or motion graphics or anything like that. So you can also go into an RGB color space if you want. Um, right now, I'm using. Uh, Let's see, I think I accidentally chose something different. All right, so US newsprint is what we use most of the time. And that just allows us to see uh, what is on each of the different four color plates. So on a press, you actually have physical plates. So this isn't um, inconsequential. It actually represents a physical plate that they need to line up. And our press is from the 70s, so we need to make sure that we have things on as few plates as possible to make the best reproduction in print design. Um, and so when I talk about four color black, what I mean is if I drag my cursor over this particular piece, you can see that it is, in fact, correct black, because the only thing that shows up is under this process black plate. You can see that it says zero for cyan, magenta, and yellow, and then 60% for black. So it's actually very helpful for a lot of things to use the separations preview. 
um, and drag your cursor over. It'll show you the exact breakdown of every color that's on the page. And I also like using that because I'm sure everyone has had this experience where you see a color that you like and you eyedropper it in InDesign or Photoshop, but then when it prints out, it doesn't look exactly the same as the colors next to it. Perhaps like you line up a background against a photo or something. So this actually uh, is a tool that you can use to see the exact CMYK breakdown. And so if I were to create a swatch with the 10%, uh, 40%, 100%, and 0%, then if I put a box that same color behind the text, it would not have any kind of interface at all. It will appear exactly the same color. So that can be also helpful if you're trying to identify perhaps a logo that was sent to you just to make sure that you understand what you're working with. Um, and another uh, element here is what's called the object inspector. So the object inspector has a lot of different features. Um, Let's click here on this C. So what it actually shows is um, also, once again, the CMYK breakdown. Um, and I actually thought that that was live type on the page. So let's find something else. OK. I clicked on that N from Business Solutions. And if you scroll down through here, you can see a lot of different information about uh, that particular piece. And if you scroll through enough, you should be able to find where it actually tells you what font it is. Um, but it looks like that one also was not actually live type on the page. Um, I'll, f I'll open up a different one, and then you'll be able to see it later. But that's really helpful if you've got a PDF sent to you and you're not exactly sure what the font is. If it is live type on the page, then it will tell you what the font is, what the font size is, like what point size it's set at, and any kind of other information that you might want to know. It'll tell you if it's bold or italic or any of that information. So, all right, that's uh, some basic assessment of what we're looking at. There's so much more that you can do than what I'll be showing you today, but uh, another feature that I want to touch on real quick here is edit object. So. A lot of times, um, we might need to lighten up a photo for newsprint, uh, or perhaps adjust the brightness and contrast just to make sure that it's going to print as well as possible. So what you can actually do is select Edit Object. And then if you select an image, then it will uh, pop up if you right click with this menu. And you can see a lot of different choices, but if you click Edit Image, then it will actually allow you to open in an image editing software application. So I've chosen Photoshop, but you can select which one you want to use in your preferences in Acrobat and use whatever it is that you want. So um, when it actually, before I do that, um, when it actually opens in Photoshop, this is not creating a file of this image. This is creating a temporary document. And this temporary document is just to make adjustments for the PDF itself. So any changes that you make here are not saved anywhere except for reflected in the PDF. But you can save this if you want to by doing File Save As, and then you have that photo to use wherever that you want. But there's easier ways to, to do that. But if you just want one image, then this is the route that you want to take. If there's a lot of images you want in the PDF, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So um, I'm just going to make a really extreme change so that you can see the difference. So I'm just going to like really just blow out this picture, um, then hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Save. And that's important, because if you don't actually save it, then it won't show up in the PDF. But don't worry, because the PDF, you actually have to go back to Acrobat and hit Save again before any changes you make are actually saved in the PDF document. So if you want to see what it looks like, it's all right to play around here and hit Save. That doesn't actually save and commit the changes to your PDF document. So if we close out of there, OK. Uh, all right. We should be able to go back to Acrobat. And then once it's finished saving, I guess it hasn't saved it yet. But you'd be able to see the change reflected there. I'm not really sure why it's taking so long. Um, so eventually, it'll show up. 
And then you can also use the edit object feature to uh, edit any other object on the page. So sorry, I've got the spinning wheel of death here, you guys. But <laughs> um, you can click on any of these letters, and you can move them around however you want to with just the edit object feature. You can actually edit the text of the document, too. If uh, you want to do that, I would recommend going to, OK, there it showed up. It looks terrible. All right. <laughs> but it's OK. Uh, so that's not actually committed to the PDF until you hit Save here, though. So um, we could undo that at any time that we want. So I just did. Um, so now we can actually see that each one of these letters has been saved as an individual vector file because of the way that the PDF was saved when they sent it to us. Um, so they might have converted their text to outlines or something like that. Um, but you can actually click on any of these vector pieces. And then you go to the same drop-down menu as before to properties. And when you open, uh, oh, actually, yeah, here, um, this is the properties menu, which is a totally different thing than I was going to show you. Uh, but you can actually edit the color space. So we do this all the time. Like, I just clicked on that background box, and then I could just convert it to grayscale if I wanted to through the properties menu. Um, and so that's a nice and easy fix for most problems that we have. But what I was going to show you is edit object. So if we hit edit object, then that will open up your vector editing software. So I use Illustrator, but you can use Affinity. You can use whatever that you want. I can't guarantee how well that works since I haven't tried it. But it actually opens up in Illustrator this box that I selected. So now I can edit it just like any other vector file in Illustrator. So I can change the color. Um, what it'll have me do is create a new swatch here really quick. Um, you'll see that it automatically came up with CMYK as the profile. So whatever color space your PDF is in, that should be reflected here. So if it's in grayscale, then it'll only show grayscale. Or you know, if it's in RGB, then it would show RGB. So that's uh, helpful. So we can change it to a really nice pink color um, and then hit Save. And once again, any changes that we make here are not committed to the document. Um, and just like in Photoshop, you can save this image if you do Save As. So for example, if someone sends you something that has a really nice vector logo that you want to use in other things, you can open it in Illustrator and then save it as a new document. And then you can use that in other stuff if you need to. Um, hopefully, they just send you the document. <laughs> but you never can tell sometimes with these clients. All right, so we can see that it is even more hideous than before um, with this nice pink in the background. But um, you might be wondering why this is actually useful. So what I normally would use it for is if we convert to grayscale, for example, then you can see how this text, um, a business partner that works as hard as you do, would not be very high contrast in grayscale with the yellow that's behind it. So where it becomes handy is then you can just select that yellow box, open it in Illustrator, and make it lighter. Or you can select the text and make it darker, or whatever that you want to do to make your life easier and make the client happy because their ad reproduced so well in print. Um, so one thing that I'd like to show you next is what is called pre-flight. Um, Preflight has a set of preloaded profiles. My work computer has like 50 of these. I think you can just download them online if you want to. But it kind of works like a Photoshop action where it goes through and it does whatever it is that you need to be done. Um, if you're having transparency flattening problems, that can help you out, um, all kinds of things. But typically, what I use it for specifically is black and white conversion most of the time. Or if you have spot colors and you want to get rid of them before you send your file to the printer, then you can use uh, convert to CMYK only. That will process out all of your spot colors, and the printer will be happy because then they don't have those to deal with. So that's very handy. So um, I'm just going to quick do black and white. So I have it selected there. I'll select this other one because it's a little hard to see like what's happening. But this one is called Digital Printing Black and White. So then you hit Analyze and Fix. 
and it'll go through a series of actions where it actually takes every single object on the page and it will convert it into a grayscale color space. So right now I'm going to save the file. It always, anytime you use preflight, will give you an option to save uh, as a different name. So I tend to do that because it's nice to have a copy just in case something goes horribly wrong or if you need the color version sometime for something else or you know any number of other things. So um, it is working. Um, it just takes a, takes a second to actually go through and make all of the changes. But then whenever it has actually converted to black and white, then you would see that reflected in any of the programs that you're opening with any of the images. It would be a black and white image or a black and white vector file. So that's handy. Um, if you have something as a vector file that is assigned the swatch called registration, then it will not make that black and white when you do this. So the swatch called registration is made for printing purposes so that the crop marks and bleed marks show up when the printer is actually going to cut it. And so it won't um, process out that swatch intentionally so that when you're converting everything else to grayscale, you still have your crop marks and things. So uh, that's a, a little tricky. So um, you can actually go through and open those items in Illustrator and then change the swatch to something else if you run into that problem. Um, so now we see that the entire thing has been converted into grayscale. So you can open the images and lighten them up. You can change any of the gray text that's not high enough contrast. And you can really just do anything that you want. So fun, fun. Um, so let's see. So I also said in my description that I would show you guys how to extract images and text. So I'm going to open up this example that was sent to us from Case. And it has several different images in here. So if you wanted to actually take out all these pictures, because, for example, the client maybe have sent you this template, but what they really want is like a long banner ad or something. And you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? So you can go to, um, I believe it is, I don't know. This is a little different interface from my computer at work, so sometimes I get a little bit confused. But I believe it is under a setting called document processing. You can actually export all of the images at the same time. Um, yeah, I am not sure. I lost track of that that setting here, so I'm sorry about that. But alternatively, you can actually just click on them and then open them and save them if you want. Um, but you'll need the, so you can select the text if you just drag your cursor over it. But that is not a good way to actually copy paste text out of the PDFs because a lot of times it will mess up the formatting. Um, and so the best thing to do is to actually go to the edit text feature um, so here under Edit PDF, you can see that when we clicked on it, all of a sudden all of these boxes appeared here. That will show you everywhere that is editable on the text. So um, this one shows that this is an image. This is text. So I can just actually copy that out of there. Um, or actually, I can just copy all of this if I want um, and then paste it into in design if I need to, so that, for example, like pretend you want a big banner, then you can format the text so that it will go across and be as many line breaks as you want instead of just the way that it was formatted there if you were just going to place it onto the page. So just in InDesign, you can create a new text box, and then you should be able to just paste in there all of the text that was on the PDF. And you'll notice that it stripped out all of the formatting, which is probably for the best. So then you can reformat if you want. Um, and so if you're going to do that, you might wonder what font that is. So since this is actually live text, we should be able to use our object inspector to find out what the font is without having to guess. OK. OK. Yeah, OK, so now it will actually come up um, down here. It says font, trade gothic, light standard, size 7.96. Um, so you can actually uh, just you know, replace that if you want. You can edit the text, but 
the caveat there is that you have to have the exact font that they use. Otherwise, it will give you an error that says, your font system isn't available. But you can also um, get around that by actually going to the properties menu under edit object. And then you can actually change the font to whatever it is that you want. Um, I was thinking that was under properties, but maybe it's under edit text. But you can change the font if you need to. But um, hopefully you won't need to. Uh, so this actually, this is an image here. You can delete it if you want to. You can delete anything that's on there with edit object. So that can allow you to do various things. We're noticing that it's behaving kind of strangely, like we deleted it, and then there's this. And that's because the way that the PDF was made, it was, um, when the PDF is made, it's uh, flattened, or the transparency settings are sort of cut apart. So the reason that we actually have different physical objects on the page is because it had a drop shadow on it. And so it created a different image raster object for the drop shadow. Or it'll do that for other like gradient effects or things like that, like a gradient feather. Like anything that's like a raster effect will be given its own object. So that's something to look out for. Um, can also be kind of interesting like to play with that on purpose if you want to. So yeah, um, I see that we only have about five more minutes. So I'll open up the floor for any questions that you guys have or anything that you wanted me to go over again. Yeah, um, so what's the best way to export a PDF um, for print? There are a few different things that you can do. Um, so most people just go file, export, and that gives you different options uh, when you're actually in, for example, in InDesign. Hopefully you're not designing in Photoshop. I won't judge you, but I am judging you. Um, uh, so for print, InDesign is really nice. Uh, the reason I say that is because Photoshop will rasterize all your text whenever you actually save your file. And when it rasterizes the text, and it can be lower resolution, and oftentimes it makes it all four color black. So that's an issue uh, many times. But if you're in InDesign and you actually go to export, there are quite a few options, and actually some that I'm still learning about. Uh, most of the time, the default will be high quality print. And for most things that you're going to do, that will be perfectly fine. So always go with that one if you can. Um, then it actually also under advanced settings has, oh, I'm just noticing this so while it's loading. Um, you can see that the last line is not right. It added a ton of extra letters. Sometimes it does that. So it's always a good thing to go through and proofread and copyright just to make sure that anything that you paste in there is correct. <laughs> Uh, most of the time it gets it right, but sometimes it doesn't. So, all right. Um, Adobe Print, we'll just put it in the desktop um, just so that we can open up this menu so that I can show you the different options here. So most of the time, all you really need up here is high quality print for anything that you're doing. Um, and so what you can actually do is go through and change some of the options. Um, this menu will tell it when it's making the PDF how much it downsamples all of your images. So if you want a really small file, then you can actually downsample quite a lot. If it's just going to be used for the web, then it only needs to really be 72 dBi, um, whatever you're using that for. And then it actually also has options for like color versus grayscale. Here you can set all of your printer's marks, the crop and the bleed. That's going to be up to your printer if they want that on there or not. So that's something that you can ask them about. Most printers will put on their own crop and bleed marks when they actually go to make their printer spreads. So it's just an extra step. They have to delete all of those off of there. So that's something that you would uh, ask your printer about. Um, the output will actually allow you. You remember all of those uh, pre-flight color settings that I showed you earlier? This will allow you to choose which one that you want to use. Um, there's a lot more advanced settings in there. Um, and then under advanced, it does have a transparency flattener. It's grayed out right now because this document doesn't actually have anything with transparency effects on it. So if I were to put something with transparency effect, then you'd be able to choose uh, high, medium, or low. 
And usually, for like a really nice press quality, you would want to make sure that high was selected. So then when it's actually cutting things apart and making all of those different objects, it's as high quality as possible. Because sometimes, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but like if you have a drop shot or too close to text and you make your PDF, it can like create sort of like a fuzzy looking, like almost like your document got sprayed with water or something. Um, so this transparency flattener is the problem there. Um, then you can make it so that when you open it in Adobe, then you have to have a password to get into it. So, um, but yeah, to summarize, high quality print. <laughs> it's a good option there. Any other questions? All right, I think it looks like my time is up. So thank you guys for stopping by.